When motivated to pursue challenging goals and objectives that allow us to uphold or maintain higher academic, financial, and personal standards, we may unintentionally find ourselves in surroundings or situations where individuals who have some power over us or have persuasive personalities prevent us from staying focused on what we want or need to achieve. They constantly project on us their opinionated views that oppose our judgments without even presenting logical and unbiased explanations to prove their views are more valuable than our own. And as a result of this, they become toxic. If we allow these types of individuals to force us to partake in actions we are adamantly against, but don't have the nerve to tell them, they will suck the energy out of us by attempting to radicalize us of their methods or beliefs. We may become puppets committed to participating in activities to achieve goals other people aren't able to or unwilling to achieve themselves. Now, how can we detect and prevent being used as representatives or poster children of other people's goals, no matter how noble they may be, even if they don't represent or collide with our own? Let's find out. And welcome to Four Seas One Family. We often face obstacles that occasionally derail us from the tracks we need to take to focus on our goals and objectives. In our minds, our goals are possible or feasible outcomes, and our objectives usually refer to the steps we need to take, and they must work in unison. And to individuals who present their opinions in ways that make them appear non-confrontational, their goal may be to persuade or program us to follow a preset script they have laid out for us to follow without giving us adequate time to question their reasons and opinions. They may sincerely believe they are helping us and hope we abandon and replace our goals with theirs. To them, having us not try or fear failing becomes an option or the norm because they cannot comprehend the positive aspects of us wanting to improve or pursue a difficult goal. These people often inject negative comments or commentary into their conversations with us that only represent and amplify negativity and put accomplishments on hold, which may lead to the end of any attempts or plans. These individuals frequently proclaim their dissatisfaction with people and circumstances they deem as not up to their high standards or principles, when the reality is what they perceive as high standards and principles are considered lower standards by you. Their comments and points of view are presented to you as if they are your therapists. In other words, regardless of our reasons or points of view, why do some people prefer or insist we believe or do what they want? Is it because they are concerned about us and consider what we are doing or want to do is wrong or impossible to achieve? Or is it because they instead want us to subscribe to or endorse activities they couldn't participate in or actions they couldn't accomplish themselves? However, it would be selfish and irresponsible to proclaim that we shouldn't accept advice from people we know well and trust. However, this doesn't negate the fact that some people, especially those with social and political objectives, may push opinions and advice upon us that go against our beliefs and goals. At the same time, we must remind ourselves why we believe what we do and whether what we believe is universally beneficial or is it restricted by outdated traditions and customs that have been made up or resemble fairy tales. Nor should we expect a savior to help us develop a totally optimistic or unrealistic outlook on life. Remember that we are more likely to fail in situations and environments that suppress logical comparisons or are surrounded by people who hold themselves and others to low standards. We must also be selective when interacting with possible naysayers because time is irreplaceable, non-renewable, and non-replenishable. Defining what types of people should become members of our valued group requires much effort and time, which can be challenging for overly sensitive individuals. 
It can become eye-opening and even refreshing to hear opinions and take advice from those who trust and believe in us and those who have earned our trust. By being selective with our limited time and the people we interact with, we can lower or even eliminate the stress others place upon us. Don't allow the opinions of toxic naysayers into your head. It may be okay to listen to what they say, but not adhere to what they want you to do. It is hoped that your polite hearing and inactions will show them that you aren't interested in their opinions or any actions they want you to partake in. This may be why some people say keeping your goals and objectives to yourself may be a good idea. Before we sign off, I would like to ask you a few questions. What requests did a person make of you that were against your goals, objectives, or beliefs? And how did you handle the situation? What types of people should we distance ourselves from? And above all, what are the best ways to maintain our distance without appearing confrontational? In what types of situations where it may not be a good idea to keep our goals and objectives to ourselves? If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have much more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Season One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.